You know, I would say spoiler alert, but I guess that would kind of defeat the purpose of this video because there isn't any spoiler alert. There is none. Let's talk about No Man's Sky. This game, what a horrendous piece of garbage that started out as an extremely overhyped software. Why? Started out extremely overhyped and you know that's partially on the developers and partially on the fans that's you know it, it, it works in both both facets both both of them had to understand what they were getting themselves into when they started overhyping the game like this and it, it it's unreal that uh how this game has ended the whole if you haven't watched it already i would say spoiler alert but there isn't one and this is again the problem when you get to the end of your galaxy or the center of your galaxy you travel there and all it does is it literally reboots you to another planet and you just have to repair your ship and there's nothing there it's one thing if you spend sixty dollars every year for a triple a platformer that is the same game every time i'm not taking a stab at call of duty it's just very similar every time there are minor changes because there's different development teams for every game and it's another thing if you are supporting an indie studio that is trying to get their game off the ground. And it's a whole nother stratosphere of terrible when you charge a triple A price like $60 for a game and then give us less than pre-beta quality. The game when it launched was terrible. Absolutely terrible for PC specifically. People's games were crashing all over the place. People couldn't get good frame rates. Their computers were overheating. My computer, I have an MSI GTX 980 Ti and had what was right before Nvidia had to re-release the driver to make it actually run well with the game. I was getting 24 to 30 frames a second with the frame counter unlocked. The game would literally freeze if I turned too fast. It would go 30, 24, zero. Sit there, if I let off of the mouse, it would actually bring things back and get my I'd get my frame rates back. And that's unacceptable. And this is the problem with modern day gaming, is that we, we as gamers have become so satisfied with instant gratification that we would rather just get a new game than wait for the developers to put a quality game out. And the reason that we do this is because of the internet. And I'm using this as an example because the internet uh, gives us the ability to update games whenever there's a problem. Now, granted, you know, it makes it, there's there's always, uh, we're, we're moving so quickly now in the modern world that everything needs to be put out within a certain time frame. And if you delay a game like Breath of the Wild before it was actually announced that Nintendo kept delaying it and delaying it and delaying it and people were getting really upset that they were doing that. But I'm willing to bet now that they're going to be putting it on the Wii U and the NX, it's going to be a much better game. And from what we've seen, it looks like it's going to be fantastic. The, the real problem here is that because we can get updates over the internet, developers aren't as willing to get as much beta testing done or get more time in because they know that they can just ship the game out and then say, oh, well, two, downs, two months down the road, you're going to get an upgraded version of the game. When, like, Black Ops 3 launched, we didn't have leaderboards. Are you fucking kidding me? We didn't have leaderboards? That's, like, one of the main things that people will play for is to make sure that they're on the top charts. Now, you can, like, when you're in-game, of course, you can see your stats with your KD and your points and things like that, but when you're in the lobby and there's always like leaderboards for weekly, monthly, all time, there was nothing there. And it was just like, how could you even not have that ready when the game came out? And back to No Man's Sky, No Man's Sky has such little qu content inside the game that it's embarrassing that people have paid $60 for it. And I wasn't, I'm not one of the ones that boarded the hype train. I didn't even know about the game until about a month before it came out. Someone asked me if I was getting it. I'm like, I don't even know what that is. And they're like, oh, you should really check it out. It looks like it's going to be fantastic. I'm like, all right, cool. I went to go check it out. And the first thing I saw was 18 quintillion planets. And I'm like, that seems massive. But with infinite possibilities like that, basically, that seems like it'd be really good. And then I looked up some of the YouTube videos uh, from when it was demoed. 
and it looked like it was going to be a fantastic game. And, you know, I would be as bold to say that this game has less content to offer than Minecraft. And Minecraft's not even a $60 game, and look how well it's done. You know, the I watched an interview with the leader of Hello Games, and he said he wants No Man's Sky to become the fan base specifically to become as passionate about No Man's Sky as uh, Minecraft people are. And I get it that you want it to get there, but you can't kick us in the face like that by charging $60 for that game and then giving us such a low level amount of things to do in the game. You know, it, it's, it's unbelievable. And I'll leave a link in the description below if you guys want to watch Getting to the Center of the Galaxy. It's you're not missing anything. You hit travel, it does this whole like whooshy whooshy light show thing, like you're traveling backwards, then the light goes ba wing, and you're on a new planet. And that's it, and it's like life support system stabilizing. And it's it's just like you started the game all over again, except you kept all your slots and your items. Like, well, what was the purpose? You li It feels like, you, at least with even Minecraft, you can kill the Ender Dragon. Like, you've at least accomplished that. And he's a challenging fucking boss. He's, it's, you know, you go to the ender world, or the, yes, yeah, you go to the end, and if you don't land right on his spot, if he blasts you with one fireball, poof, you're gone, and that's, that's speaking from experience, that's incredibly frustrating when you've gotten very far, and you go to kill him, and he kills you with one hit, because he knocked you off, and you fell to your death, and, you know, before the generation of the 360 and the PS3 started, we had excluding the Xbox the first Xbox because that one already had Xbox Live but you didn't they didn't they weren't really utilizing it the way that they do now I swear to god if my phone goes off again and the thing is is that when you had a game like Melee for Smash Bros you had all these games just as an arbitrary example uh you had developers had to spend countless countless hours testing and developing the game to make sure that if they release this game and it's trash it's going to tarnish the name of not only the developer it's going to get the studio the entire franchise could be ruined and look at melee it, it's there are so many levels of depth that you can play to you could become a player like mewtwo king or leffen and those are just some of the top players that i i know off the top of my head right now and that game didn't need any updates and it's a simple game and you, I vouch to say, you can probably do more in Melee than you can with No Man's Sky. And that game, when it launched, was 50 bucks, because that's before the generation jumped that everything was $60. Nintendo was still charging 50 for all of their games. But it's, it's just unacceptable that developers now are getting to a point where they would rather put a game out that isn't completely finished because they know that they have to meet a sales requirement, and then they'll give it to you over a period of time. And this is, this, this is so true with DLC as well. When you see DLC, for example, Black Ops 3, I got the season pass for it. They give you four maps, and usually it's usually four multiplayer maps or three multiplayer maps and a zombies map. And it's, it's like, I'm just getting, like, it's just the map packs. Like, there's nothing more to it. And it's like, was it worth spending an, almost an entire another game's worth for it and it's like you guys could have just thrown these games in there and not or these maps rather and not charged me fifty dollars for a collective of 12 maps so far you know we haven't gotten the fourth dlc yet and it's it's just an insult to gamers everywhere that we are succumbing to such a a terrible time in gaming where developers aren't concerned about what the gamers think anymore they're more concerned about the video uh, or videos yeah they're more concerned about numbers and getting out it feels more like it's a commission thing than rather than being passionate and i think a lot of that holds true with with uh with microsoft and sony's games comparatively to nintendo and i'm not a nintendo fanboy i love my ps4 i don't have an xbox one because i have the ps4 and all the other games that i play are pretty much on pc but so Anyone that knows the background of Satoru Iwata knows how dedicated he was to making sure his games were quality before they went out. And I feel like a lot of development studios are starting to lose the integrity of what it means to put out a quality game. 
and it's it's really frustrating because gamers are eventually going to be like well what's the point of getting it and they're going to be pissed and they're going to retaliate and i don't know if hello games can really recover for something like this unless they give us an ass load of content that is free that we shouldn't have to pay for because we've paid so much money for this game already over its lifetime like we don't even we don't have multiplayer i thought i wasn't under the i didn't even know that it didn't have multiplayer when the game started so when i got it i'm like oh dude we can go conquer planets together that'd be pretty funny he's like no you can't there's no multiplayer i'm like what do you mean there's no multiplayer what else am i supposed to do by myself it doesn't shoot things like at least with minecraft you can actually build things and there's no like to a degree there is a certain confines that you're restricted to but you still can build buildings and you can still create things with your mind whatever your limitations are excluding recipes like you can only build things with recipes in no man's sky and that's ridiculous to me like you're given all of these materials and all of that these elements it's like oh well i'm glad you discovered all this stuff and now you can still only build it to these recipes meanwhile if if you've discovered that recipe no less meanwhile minecraft you can just be like oh you got some wood you got some stone you got some diamond here you go poof make something or you got redstone you have gold you can make active mine carts so you, they just push themselves you know or active mine wow yeah the power power blocks excuse me anyway it's just i, I just can't believe that you know i didn't i didn't even get to the center in my own game like i got i was probably about five to ten hours in of my own thing and i i'm not really too one to get too broken up about spoilers so i was like all right well let's see what happens at the center of the galaxy this will just motivate me more to get there faster and play the game more and then when i saw that i haven't touched the game in a week and a half two weeks now and it's just, it's a big deterrent for me wanting to buy new games that are becoming overhyped. The same thing happened to me with Destiny. I bought the white PS4 Destiny Bundle Edition on launch night. And I played Destiny for a bit. And I got, before they changed the whole light level configuration stuff, I probably put about a solid 30 to 50 hours in there. And, uh... I realized that I was just doing the same monotonous thing over and over again. I just felt like I wasn't progressing a story. I wasn't growing as a character. There was no theme. There was no end goal to me. And it it just upset me because I just, I spent so much money on it. I'm glad I didn't. And then they released the Taken King and asked you to buy the game again. That was just a kick in the face. It's like, why couldn't you have just waited and given us the Taken King? And I feel like that only furthers my point of these companies just want money. They don't want to give the gamers a quality game. And if like, if you got a quality game and you have more stuff that you want to put in it, I think gamers would be more willing to wait an extra, let's say six months and you upcharge the game from $60 to $70 as the base price, but you just got maybe half more added to the game so if you have this much and you just got added half more to the entire game for an extra ten dollars who's gonna come no one's gonna complain about that because you've gotten your money's worth and i just i don't know i'm scared to see where the future of gaming is going and i certainly hope that indie developers around are really starting to take note of what's going on because if this keeps happening indie developers everywhere are going to fail they need to understand that we as gamers are very willing to support you if you make sure that you give us quality when we pay for it or at least charge us properly when you're going to give us a game if you would charge the game for let's say 20 or 30 dollars and then said early access program no one would have batted an eye at this game they would have said okay yeah it's definitely early access because there's not a whole lot to do but it's still pretty fun you know i think with what they're doing now it has a fantastic amount of potential and then it can even go even farther once you know maybe six months down the road but to give us such a garbage launch with optimization for pc players everywhere and then just charge us 60 dollars for that's just it's inexcusable and uh, i think my rant is over i'm just i'm i'm very flustered that we were 
insulted so badly from this game. And uh, I'd love to see what you guys think, that if Hello Games can really pull it out of this, or if, uh, if they're pretty much uh, shit out of luck, because it's going to be a dark path for them to try and fix this one. The fucking phone again. Anyway, guys, thanks for listening to me rant for however long, 15 minutes. All right. Well, I will uh, catch you in another video, and I'll see you guys later.